Mountains have been an important part of Tasmania's landscape. 150 years ago, the first line was officially opened between Launceston and Deloraine. It helped transform the island state, which was one of the last to have a rail network. Things were moving along. The economics of, the, of each of the other states was uh, uh, building up and Tasmania was getting left behind, so it needed to happen. It's been an economic enabler. It's created industry, it's created jobs, it's ensured the employment of people. The rail milestone has been celebrated at the historic Longford Rail Bridge that's also marking its 150th birthday. They were brave and they, they had a vision and they, they went for it and of course they achieved it. And here 150 years later we're still using the same bridge. Several groups are trying to preserve Tasmania's railway past and push for more passenger trains into the future. Anywhere in the world, the more of these things you have in one particular place, the, um, the more attractive it, it becomes uh, to people that want to travel around on trains. In the Derwent Valley, enthusiasts are lobbying for the revival of a tourism railway. They've been maintaining and restoring locomotives and carriages in the expectation that one day the public will again be able to experience a train trip around the area. In the northeast, the use of old rail lines has split the community. The lines haven't carried trains for years, but proponents are pushing ahead for a heritage railway from Launceston to Lilydale. If you asked me five years ago, I would have said five years' time. So we don't really know the exact time frame. We are hoping as soon as possible we can. The Don River Railway in the northwest is looking to expand its operations. Rail tourism is, a, I think, it's, well, prior COVID was the second growest growing tourism across the world. On track for a revival. Damien McIntyre, ABC News.